All right, welcome. So what we're gonna do is we are going to um, help you get your uh, chart of account set up. So in order to do this, first you have to be logged into your company, have your company settings all, all done, and, and, um, and then you'll be ready to move on to the chart of accounts. So the chart of accounts, we're gonna be able to see the chart of accounts by going down to uh, accounting. We can see it there. Right, it's in a chart of accounts. When you first pull this up, there's going to be a little screen that says, you know, this is kind of something that normally people don't go and mess with, right? If you're not taking a bookkeeping class, if you're not the bookkeeper or accountant, if you're just the uh, business owner and you're doing some stuff in QuickBooks, you don't really want to mess with the chart of accounts. But uh, hey, that's what we're learning right now is how to do this accounting for this. So we've got the chart of accounts. Your chart of accounts, you can see I kind of, I started setting some stuff up in here. You can you can set uh, your accounts up manually if you would like to. Uh, you can definitely do that. You What your, your goal is, you're matching the accounts as you go uh, down in the uh, handbook, the student handbook, right, that you're given. You're, you're matching your accounts up with those, right? So everything that you see in that handbook at the end of chapter two should match up with what you have here uh, in your chart of accounts. So if it doesn't, you can manually manually change it. One nice uh, feature that uh, we have though is we can upload a batch of accounts so we don't have to create them all. We can upload them. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that really quick, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go out to the uh, your Canvas course site. So this is an example. Yours might look a little different, but really what you're looking for is this right here. Tad Gaming Services Chart of Accounts CSV. So this file right here is going to be the file that you're going to use uh, and, to, and you're going to upload it into your QuickBooks. So you see I open it up here and uh, it comes open in, in the Canvas structure. I can click on this uh, link above here and it will download it. I'm using Chrome, the Chrome browser, and so it's gonna download it here to the bottom left. And so I see it there. So that is in my download folder now. I know that that's in my download folder. Uh, and so now I can flip back over here to chart of accounts. And so what I need to do is I need to go to um, the area where I can pull those in and so I'm gonna go up to the, the little gearbox up here and I can select under tools import uh, data so I right here right so we have the option of to import all sorts of data and we're gonna import some more after this but the first one that we're gonna do is gonna be chart of accounts right here chart of accounts and so I'm gonna go ahead and select I'm gonna go find that uh, in my download folder, uh, let's see, so your, your uh, setup might be a little different than mine, but I'm going to find my download folders like this, and that's where mine uh, downloads to. So that's the file I downloaded is this one right here on top. I'm going to go ahead and click open, and it'll queue it up there. Okay, so I, you can also, of course, there's also an option on here for Google Sheets, but we have a CSV file. And so we're going to use that. So we're going to go ahead and click next. And it, it queues it up. What this is doing is this is matching up the uh, different fields uh, or the columns, right, in my uh, CSV file with fields that are in my QuickBooks, um, right? So I need to bridge those over. And so I need to make sure that I have these matched up. It looks like the top one, detail type is good, account name is good, account number is good, and type. All these are all matched up, so it looks like we're doing good there. We're gonna click over to the next one. Um, so if your account here is uh, blocked out in red, if there's like a little red outline, then that means there's already an account set up that looks like that one, so it doesn't want you to duplicate your um, your account so it is it'll warn you it'll warn you and so I um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and dump these in I think that I might get a couple duplicates because I started setting it up manually before right 
Something else to note is your QuickBooks chart of accounts, when you, when you normally uh, start the company and get it going and do the company setup at the beginning in Chapter 1, um, it's going to cr automatically create a chart of accounts for you. And so you're going to have stuff already out there. You're going to dump this as you import it in on top of what you have, and so it'll be all mixed together. And you're going to have to go through. I'll show you how to do that. Um, uh, you're going to have to go through and uh, clean it all up. Uh, let me fix this here real quick. All right, so I went ahead and, and um, I imported it. It worked out for me. Uh, it turns out that there were some accounts that I already have set up. It marked them in red, of course, and so it didn't let me uh, import those in. And so, um, so anyways, so that's okay, though, because I already had some set up like that, and so hopefully it won't duplicate it, and so that looks good. So it looks like we got an import already done. So let's go back to our chart of accounts. And we can see, yep, all these with numbers, it uh, it uploaded all those, so that's good. Uh, and so I'm gonna go back again to my, my student manual and I'm going to start going down through there now that I've imported these and I'm going to start um, merging or trying to figure out okay which accounts do I need and which ones don't I need so let me let me show you real quick how that works okay so here we are so again right here uh, starting it's it looks like it's page 90 of the at the back of the uh, section 2 it's the case study activities starting right here right at the bottom we see our accounts listed out so what we want to do is we want to compare these with uh, what we have over here in QuickBooks okay so uh, in QuickBooks it's gonna have uh, some that we may not need it's gonna have some that we may need so we can kind of flip back and forth and see it looks like I got my checking savings accounts receivable and deposited right so it's gonna it's gonna have several so I'm just gonna go down through and and look at those really quick so one thing that you uh, let, let me show you real quick uh, one that might be a problem so it looks like I've got my uh, furniture here uh, fixed assets Looks like it looks like there's one that it didn't pick up. It looks like it didn't pick up my furnitures, furniture and fixtures on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and add one. So it looks like I have one to add. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add it. So it's important to note that the uh, beginning account type is the is um, kind of the middle column here, right? So we see it right here, bank other current assets fixed assets that's the that's the the uh, account type that second that last column over here in our manual checking savings undeposited funds um, all that that's going to be the uh, detail type okay so for that one that I'm missing I'm it's going to be uh, fixed assets and then the detail type is going to be uh, let's see fixtures and furniture right there okay and then the name is going to be uh, fix uh, furniture and fixtures uh -huh. and fixtures so something something to keep in mind here we see on this that uh, with the account name it's the second column here it has an account number in the column with it and the account number in that first column, right? So we don't have to add that second account uh, number in the second column. It'll automat automatically uh, populate it when we run reports and, and uh, look at the accounts. It'll have this second account number show uh, automatically. It'll pull it from the first column and kind of uh, uh, 
make it part of the second column. So we don't have to add that when we when we go in and do this. So for example, uh, that's my name. I don't have to add it. The number will be separate. So that'll be 15,100. Um, don't necessarily need to do a description. I can if I want to, right? If this is the sub account of another one, I'd put that. Um, and so it looks like this one is uh, set. Uh, let's see what else. What else might not be right? Fixture and furniture. Fixed asset. So it looks like there might already be one here. Oh, there it is, right there. There it is. So that that one was in there. So that's why I didn't. Uh, get in there. So this one, this will actually, th this is a good, good example, right? So if I wanted to add it, I'd do exactly what I just did, uh, and and it didn't add because it had one in there already. So that's good that it didn't add, right? Or else I'd have a duplicate. So what I need to do now with this one, it's not updated with the right account information, or with the right information. So I need to, oops, I keep clicking on, on view register. I don't want to do that. I want to click on this little arrow here, and go to edit. Right, and so I'm able to go in here and uh, furniture and fixtures, it's got that, and add my uh, correct account number in there uh, and save and close there. There we go, so now now it's on there. There we go, it's, it's nestled in right there under the fixed asset computer, so that's where it should be. And so I like that, that looks good right there. And so I can continue on. So I'm going to go continue on down. One thing I did want to show you was I wanted to show you um, a few things for to make things inactive, right? So as I go down through here, really, my next account after the furniture accounts is going to be the uh, accounts payable. So I've got all of these extra accounts in here that we're not going to be using. Uh, and I'm gonna go all the way down to it looks like I got a lot of fixed asset accounts and other assets so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select all of these and really I'm going all the way down to accounts payable because that's the one that I uh, is next in my list so I don't need all these so I, instead of deleting them what we're gonna be able to do is we're gonna use our batch actions up top and we're gonna make them inactive uh, some accounts may not uh, be able, you might not be able to set them as inactive if they're needed for the system, right? If they're system accounts, like accounts payable would be one of these. If I tried to uh, inactivate accounts payable, it would be like, no, you can't do that because that's one of our main accounts that we use when we do our billings. So it's not going to let me inactivate that one. Uh, but all the other ones that aren't part of the main system, of expenses and of uh, the revenue then it, and all that, then it's, it's gonna allow me to inactivate them. So that's how you clean those up, okay? So anyway, so hopefully that'll help you. So we showed you how to um, add an account, right? We did that, we showed you how to edit an account, and we showed you how to inactivate it. So with those, you should be able to clean up a lot of these as well. So hopefully this helps. Uh, and of course, as always, if you run into any roadblocks, let me know. Uh, one of the things I definitely tell my students is do not suffer in silence. So if you uh, are having a hard time with it, uh, let me know, right? Send me an email, uh, come to class and let's talk and, and figure out how we can help you progress because uh, accounting should not be uh, torture. It should be learning and moving forward and getting that skill set that you need to to succeed in what you want to do in life. So thanks. We'll talk to you later.